Welcome to London, a 24/7 city, a buzzing metropolis where time governs our every move. If we don't understand time, we become its victims. Time is a gentle deity, says Sophocles. Perhaps it was for him. These days, it cracks the whip. Here we are in a place where mankind is trying to master time, the Royal Observatory, Greenwich. We talk to the horologist Matthew Reed to learn about our struggle to tame this relentless god. So, what is time? Well, time, quite simply, is a unit of measurement, and uh, we could say we measure time in terms of duration. Uh, and simply, the fundamental unit that concerns us as human beings is the rotation of the Earth in relation to the Sun. But who were the earliest timekeepers? The Egyptians and the Babylonians.、Um, It was the Babylonians that introduced the sexagesimal system of using six, which we now use as 60, 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a day. The Egyptians again developed、um, timekeeping devices like sundials, but really in the 13th century it was、uh, Europeans、um, in England, Germany, and so on. And then the pendulum clock, which is a big step forward as far as we're concerned. Um, the Dutch and then the English、uh, in London, in fact, developed the pendulum clock、um, in order that、uh, humanity could organise itself, I guess.、Um, uh, but for prayer, originally, that was the most important、uh, driving factor、um, to organise religious ceremonies at certain times of the day. So it was a, a sense of organisation. So everybody came to one place at one time. Now, the earliest mechanical clocks only rang bells; they didn't have dials as such. So there was a, an audible signal sent to、uh, within an organisation,、uh, and so everybody could come to to prayer at one particular time. But for some things, you don't need a clock to know when it's time to act. When you're hungry, you just know when to eat. However, your consumption is based on a limited time frame. After all, you're in London. That is why you do it fast or faster. People's daily routine doesn't allow time for them to prepare a meal. That's why they choose a speedier alternative: fast food outlets. In such places, the time spent to order, eat, and dispose of the leftovers is minimal. Behind the scenes in this kebab shop, it is possible to see the frenetic pace at which the staff work. During a regular day. 56 man hours are required in order to serve 500 meals, an average of six and a half minutes per meal, including preparation, serving, and cleaning. The hectic life urbanites lead demands very precise time control. Mankind has increasingly refined it throughout the ages. Well, the sundial is reasonably accurate as long as you understand the movement of the of the Earth. Things like water clocks and the very early mechanical clocks were,、uh, by modern standards, hopelessly inaccurate. And as I said, it really wasn't until、uh, the development of the pendulum control clock、uh, in the 1650s that we start to see what we would call today precision clocks. Well, during the 20th century, the,、um, the pendulum control clock was superseded by electronics by、uh, the quartz crystal oscillator. Which took us to an accuracy of maybe a few seconds a year. Now the quartz crystal clock was superseded by the cesium clock, and now we have cesium standards that are stable、um, to within a second in 15 million years. That's a staggering achievement, but how does it affect us? For a human being, 15 million years is a long time. Well, in day-to-day -day life, of course, it doesn't because. Uh, a watch or a clock within a few seconds is good enough to catch a train or whatever. However, in reality, catching a train turns out to be a little more complicated than that. Considering what happens in any typical station, the possibilities start to unfold when you choose a method to purchase your ticket. Did you use a ticket machine, a swipe card, or did you queue at the ticket counter? More possibilities are open while you are passing through the barrier. Do you have the correct ticket? Were the staff friendly and helpful? At times, it may seem that events are conspiring to delay your journey, but the truth is the variables involved in this time equation are too complex. 
Today, London Underground is a mass transportation system that carries over 3 million passengers a day, or 1 billion a year. The trains average a speed of 35 miles per hour. Passengers rely on this network to move them to and from work, to keep appointments and to allow others to be in the driving seat while they read their books. Are you in time for your train? Is your train in time for you? According to London Transport, the most common reason for delays are passengers falling ill. The train has to be stopped, assistance sought, the sick passenger removed, meaning a two or three minute delay. The next train will be slightly more delayed, so will the next one and the one after. What started as a two minute delay in South London at 2pm ends up as a 30 minute delay in North London at 6pm. That is known as the cascading effect, thus making it possible for you to arrive on time for a late train. So why do we need to measure time so precisely if in our daily lives the consequences of time can be so unpredictable? But where it, precision timekeeping is vitally important uh, is in military applications um, for guided missiles and so on, all rely on very accurate time standards. The, the higher precision the time standard, the closer accuracy. It's not only in military applications where sophisticated time measurement is crucial. Uh, all mobile telephones and such rely on accurate time standards of synchronisation of different uh, units. So basically the, the more stable the timekeeping device is, then the more information can be transmitted. So we'll see uh, vast step forwards in, in um, telecommunications. Although we are all affected by it, most of us are unaware of the nanosecond, a splinter of time, one billionth of a second, which is used to control the systems that carry our voice over the airwaves. Even this is too long for a femtosecond, one millionth of a nanosecond. The heyday of speed, a time when bullets are motionless and Conkle travels less than the width of an atom. This is how far humanity has gone in its quest to master time. But what will we then find if time, quite simply, is what stops everything from happening all at once?